Hey, what's up, Praise Youth? How's everybody feeling tonight? Just gonna walk circles around Ethan. I'm running around Ethan. He thought he could get away from me, but he didn't. How's everybody feeling tonight? It's the best night of the week. It's Wednesday. You're in the best place in the world. Praise Youth. Is anyone excited for Color Party next week that we're talking about? So good. Is anyone excited to be here right now, this week? Does anyone love Jesus that's here tonight? Oh, so good. I'm glad that was the loudest one because it's all about Jesus. Just turn to your neighbor and say, it's all about Jesus. So good. So good. So good. It's all about Jesus. Well, we're so glad you're here. My name's Aaron. If you don't know me yet, I get to be the J High Pastor. Where's all my J High people at? Let me hear if you're J High. Ow! They're the ones that I go out there and I just whoop them in Gaga Ball, Nine Square, like you name it. They're catching L's from this guy. That is a challenge for after service. Anyways, so we are in week two. Everybody say week two. Week two. We are in week two of our Show Your True Colors series, which we always do before the color party. So next week is the last week because it's also the color party. So like we've said like a million times already, invite all your friends. It's going to be the best night ever. It's going to be insane. And we're going to have a bunch of fun. We're going to most importantly learn about Jesus. And then we're going to throw color at each other and like roll around in it. Then there's going to be fireworks. It's going to be awesome. So last week, Pastor Jimmy did an incredible job at starting off the Show Your True Colors series. Is anyone there for that? Anyone, 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 anyone raise your hands if you were there? So good. Pastor Jimmy did a great job talking about being unashamed. And he talked about, I loved when he talked about how we shouldn't point people to ourselves, right? We don't want to point people to ourselves. We want to point people to Jesus through ourselves. So how you live your life matters. You're all leaders, right? You can point people to Jesus by the way that you live. And so tonight, or this week, as I was thinking about tonight's message, I was just thinking about that word that Pastor Jimmy preached about last week, unashamed. Everyone just say, unashamed. Just turn to your neighbor and say, unashamed. So good. And I, I said it, I got to that point where it's like you say words so many times, you know, and like it starts to sound like a little weird. I was like, unashamed, unashamed, unashamed. But I was just thinking about it, because like if you're unashamed of something, that means that you, there's no shame, right? Un means like not, and then ashamed. So like there's not shame. And so I thought it'd be fun tonight if we talked about the shame that we all know in the world because we're all humans and we have all experienced shame. And I know that right now you can probably think of embarrassing stories from when you were a little kid or probably earlier today at school whenever you were ashamed of something. Because shame is something that is in all of us. It's in the world. It's everywhere. And we've all felt shame before. We've all felt ashamed of something we've done. And it's crazy because we live in a world where, like we're talking about, we want to be unashamed for Jesus. But we live in a world that wants us to be ashamed of Jesus. Because I know when I, when I was in middle school, when I was in J-High, I lost a lot of friends because they were like, if you keep talking about Jesus, we're not going to be your friend. And I was like, see ya! I'm like, I'm unashamed. I love this guy. He came back from the dead. No one else can do that. Anyways, the world wants us to be ashamed of Jesus. And our, our culture is full of shaming. Like, you know, social media. It's like skinny shaming, fat shaming, like any kind of shaming. Social media, like our world loves to be, to give shame to other people. And so for tonight, as we talk about shame and being unashamed, I'm just going to give you a quick definition. The literal Google definition of shame is this. It's going to be on the screen. Shame is a painful feeling of humiliation or distress caused by the consciousness of wrong or foolish behavior. And I don't know about you guys, but I've done a lot of wrong or foolish behavior in my life I know y'all are all like super perfect Christians and you've never messed up, but I've done a lot of that stuff. This is basically just saying it's a painful feeling of humiliation caused by the consciousness of wrong or foolish behavior. Like, I know I messed up. And then I feel bad about it because I know I messed up. And maybe you felt shame before. Maybe you were studying for a test at school or maybe you're in a track meet or something. And then maybe the test you were studying for, you thought you were going to ace it. 
and then you made like a really bad grade and you get home and you're like, oh, I don't want to tell my parents that what I made on this test. I experienced that a lot in school. This is a personal story. But like they, maybe like your parents find out about the grade that you made and they yell at you and then you want to just like run to your room and slam the door and just like hide under the covers and you just want to like get away. You want to hide because you are ashamed of the grade that you made. It's like our, our society, we love to shame people, right? It's like, uh, like social media is a lot about shaming. Like if someone's doing something well, like literally if someone's trying to be in public office of anything right now in the world, the number one thing people do is like, let's find all the dirt on this person. Let's find everything they've ever done that they should be ashamed of and let's tell everyone so they'll be ashamed. Or it's like maybe if you're playing Call of Duty, anyone? And like trash talking is like synonymous with Call of Duty. And it's like, like you're playing a game and people just try to shame you the whole time. They're like you're free, you're literally so free, you're freer than a Costco free sample, your box, that box is like a fish, you're literally dog water. It's like people just try to shame you the whole time, right? Everything they do is about shame. It's like I'm better than you, you should be, feel bad for how bad you are at this. But the crazy thing about shame is that it's so, it's so strong, such a strong emotion to us because we all know there is something wrong with us that needs to be hidden, right? Like we all know that I have messed up. We all have things in our lives that we've done or that we've thought that we don't want anyone to know about. And there's just situations where you're like, you're super ashamed. Like maybe you overdress for a party. You're like, oh, I'm wearing a tux and everyone else is in like shorts. Or maybe you underdress for a party and you're like, oh, everyone's in a tux and I'm wearing sandals. You know, or maybe if you're like high schoolers, maybe you've been in a line at HEB or something and you like swipe your card and it declines and the whole line's like, ooh, ouch. And you're like, ah, sorry. And you're like, mom, help. Uh, or maybe there's like a secret that you don't want anyone to know about and somehow the whole school finds out about it. Like we are all super familiar with shame. And the thing about shame is that it makes us feel like if you really knew everything about me, then you would run away and you would not love me. And that's why shame is so powerful because it makes us feel this way. And shame is literally in like every movie, especially Disney. Like we use Disney movies a lot because it's like they're so good. Everyone watches them, but they have all these messages. Like shame is all up in Disney movies. Lion King. Simba's like, oh man, Mufasa died because I was out here like in the wildebeest came and like, ka, 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 ka. And then Mufasa's dead. And he's like so ashamed and Scar's like, ah, that was your fault. And then Simba, what does he do when Simba's ashamed? He runs away from Pride Rock. Or in Frozen, anyone? I'm not going to sing the song. Elsa, which one has the powers? Pfft. Elsa has the powers and she like hurts her sister at the beginning or something and her parents are like, no, this is bad. You should not do this. We're going to hide you away in a room so you can't hurt anyone else. Or Star Wars. Any Star Wars lovers in here? Star Wars fans? Yep. Star Wars. I see you. Luke Skywalker, one of the most epic Jedi of all time. What happens whenever he realizes that he created Kylo Ren? What does he do? He literally goes into exile and runs away from everyone and hides on that little bitty island with the little bitty like weird animals, right? And he's like, I came to the most unfindable place in the galaxy. Like shame makes us think that no one will love us and that we're not good enough. And the crazy thing about shame is like, yeah, we have all these stories like, like Star Wars and Simba or maybe that secret that was found out, found out about us at school. But I don't know if you know this, but shame goes back like really far, like to the very beginning of time and the beginning of humans on earth, and, like Adam and Eve. So let's look at Adam and Eve, because Adam and Eve experienced shame. And so in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It's awesome. He's like God, and he created things out of nothing. And so Adam and Eve are living in perfection in the garden. There's like animals, there's plants, there's flowers, there's Chick-fil-A. Like everything's perfect, right? There's no line in Chick-fil-A ever, even though the line's super fast. Anyways, like Adam and Eve are in the garden, and it says that they knew no shame. It's like the Bible could have used any word right there. It's like it could have said they knew no sadness, they knew no grief, they knew no frustration. But it's like the Bible says they knew no shame. 
Because when God created the garden, Adam and Eve were living in there, and they were completely known, and they were completely loved by God. There was no shame. There was nothing that they should be ashamed of, because God knew everything about them, and he still loved them. And so Adam and Eve were in the garden, and then one day, the bad guy, the enemy, comes in, and he's like, whoa, that fruit on the tree that God told you not to eat, that looks pretty good. You should go try that out. And uh, we're going to pick it up in Genesis chapter 3. So they're getting tempted to eat the fruit. And it says, talking about Eve, it says, She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious. She wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. Come on guys, get it together. At that moment, their eyes were opened. So they eat the fruit that they're not supposed to eat. They sin, right? And literally it says, at that moment their eyes were opened and they suddenly felt what? They suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. Like there was no shame before this moment. And suddenly they felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. And then when the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord God among the trees. So you see, Adam and Eve are living in perfection. There's no shame, there's no sin, there's nothing to hide. And they eat the fruit and immediately, suddenly, they feel shame. And then after they feel shame, they hide from God. Because sin is shame and shame separates us. Like those movies analogies, they feel ashamed and they literally like, I'm running away, I'm separating myself from everything. So sin is shame and shame separates. Adam and Eve immediately separate themselves from God. They hide from God. And I know guilt and shame can kind of be like similar words. So I want to give you a definition of the difference between guilt and shame. Check this out. Guilt says, I did something bad. Shame says, I am bad. So guilt is like, oh man, like I stole something. That was bad. But shame says, I did something bad, and so that's going to affect my character. That's going to affect my identity. It's not just saying I did something bad. Shame is when you say I did something bad, and so therefore I am bad. I identify as bad. And so tonight, I think a lot of us in this room, I think a lot of us feel like Adam and Eve. And I know there's a lot of shame in our lives. There's a lot of things that no one, that you don't want anyone to know. And if people did find out and they posted about it on Instagram, you'd be like, oh my gosh, this is the crazy. You would want to run away. You'd want to hide from everyone. And so tonight I want us to do two things as we're learning about shame and how we can be unashamed for Jesus. So everybody say two things. Everybody say first thing. The first thing we need to do is get wowed. Everybody just say, wow. Like, a little bit louder. Wow. Let's get wowed, y'all. I'm not talking about World of Warcraft. We're going to get wowed. Because when you think about it, Adam and Eve had so much sin and shame in their life. After they messed up, they hid and they ran away from God. They separated themselves from God as fast as they could. But what does God do whenever Adam and Eve separate themselves, whenever they have shame in their lives, whenever they have something to hide, whenever they're ashamed of something? In Genesis 3, 9, the story goes on to say that God walks into the garden, Adam and Eve are hiding, and God walks in and he's like, huh, hey, where are you guys? So in that moment, Adam and Eve are hiding, God walks into the garden, he's like, normally we're hanging out, playing gaga ball right now, but I don't know where they are, they're hiding in the trees. And God's like, hey, where are you guys? Spoiler alert, God did know where they were. So it's like anytime God asks a question, it's not because he needs to learn something. It's because we need to learn something. You can, well, that's a whole nother thing. But anyways, God walks in and says, where are you? But it's not because he doesn't know where they are. He was proving, I love this, in the middle of Adam and Eve being in their shame, hiding from God, running from God, in the middle of all that, God walks in and says, hey, where are you? And so God is still chasing after them. God is still seeking after them in that moment. When they're running away from God, God is running after them. 
Because sin is shame, and shame separates, but God wants to fill the gap. God is saying, yeah, there's all this shame, you're running away from me, but hey, I'm coming after you. Wait up, I don't want to be separated from you. So whenever we separate ourselves from God, God is saying, hey, come back, come back. I know you have sin, I know you have shame, but I actually know all of your sin already. I actually know all of your shame already, and guess what? I still love you. That thing that you're afraid of, you think that no one will love you, but I'm trying to call to you and say, where are you? Because I do still love you. And it's like, wow. God still loves us. And then Genesis 3, chapter 3, verse 21. God finds Adam and Eve, and they're hanging out in God's, it says in Genesis 3, 21, and the Lord God made clothing from animal skins for Adam and his wife. And I point that out because you probably, if you realize from the earlier verse, you're like, Adam and Eve already made themselves clothes from fig leaves, bro. Like, they're already wearing Adidas. Like, they're good. They already have clothes. Then why does it say, and the Lord God made clothing from animal skins for Adam and his wife? I love that it says that that God made Adam and Eve clothing from animal skins because it's trying to tell us, like, it's pointing us to Jesus. It's pointing us to the good news. It's pointing us to the gospel of Jesus because he's saying, look, Adam and Eve, I see that you made clothes out of fig leaves. Like, you did your best to cover up your shame, to literally cover up your shame. But God's saying, you know what, there's a better way to do that. And whenever God made clothes out of animal skins, guess what it means to make clothing out of animal skins? There needs to be a sacrifice that's made, right? There needs to be a sacrifice that pays the price for them to be able to be covered up. And I love that this is just pointing to Jesus because even in the garden, right after they messed up, God's already saying, look, there's a plan. You have sin, you have shame in your life, you're trying to run away from me, you're trying to separate yourself from me, but guess what? I already have a plan and I'm already showing you my plan because you tried to cover up your sin, you tried to cover up your shame, but that's not going to cover it, that's not going to cut it. You know what? I'm going to give you some clothes that will really cover your sin, that will really cover your shame and it requires a sacrifice. And one day there's going to be the ultimate sacrifice, and his name is Jesus. He's going to come to earth. He's going to leave perfection to come down to earth. It's like we're running away from God as fast as we can, and God's saying, I love these, so, I love these people so much that I'm going to leave heaven to come to earth. So as we're running away from God, he's coming down to us to be the sacrifice to cover our shame. How good is that? That's when I read this, and I'm like, Wow! That is insane. God is saying, you can try to cover up your shame all you want. But God's saying, I'm the only one that can actually cover up your shame. It requires a sacrifice. And God said, I'm willing to be that sacrifice. Jesus is our sacrifice that can cover our shame. And I love having that in mind. It's so cool to read this verse in Isaiah chapter 61 verse 10. It says, I'm overwhelmed with joy in the Lord my God. He's overwhelmed with joy. Sounds like someone saying, wow, I'm overwhelmed with joy in the Lord my God, for he has dressed me with the clothing of salvation. See, I'll try to dress myself with all this kind of stuff, all these fig leaves trying to clo- cover up my shame. But it's saying, God has dressed me with the clothing of salvation. And he's draped me in a robe of righteousness. And I'm like a bridegroom dressed for his wedding or a bride with her jewels. We are looking good. I love that, that we try to cover up our own shame. And God's like, no, you need, there needs to be a sacrifice to cover up shame. And his name is Jesus. And he loved you so much that he was willing to be that sacrifice. And all the sin, all the shame that you have in your lives, all the things that you're thinking about right now that you don't want anyone to know, guess what? Just like whenever God was in the garden, he said, where are you? But he actually knew where they were. God knows that shame that you're thinking about right now. He already knows it. And he's still calling out to you and saying, I love you. I care about you. I value you. I treasure you. I love you so much that I died for you. Because we love trying to cover up our shame. But we have a God that knows everything we've done. And he still loves us. And I want you to write this down in your journals if you're taking notes. 
I am fully known and fully loved by God. I am fully known and fully loved by God. Even if you feel full of shame right now, God knows what you're ashamed of and he still loves you. Because shame makes us think that if you knew what I've done, if you knew this, then you wouldn't love me. And God's saying, I do know that and I still love you. This is why I love that the first point is get wowed. Everybody just say, wow. It's like, I love, I love coming to church. I love coming to Praise Youth. I love talking to Jesus. I don't know if you know this, but Jesus just wants to be in a relationship with you. It's not weird to talk to Jesus. Like whenever you're praying, every time I start my prayers, I'm just like, God, thank you. Every time I pray, the first thing I say is just thank you. I'm like, wow, God, God, you're so good. God, you know everything about me and you still love me. So after we get wowed, the next thing that we need to do as praise youth and as followers of Jesus, we need to get loud. After you get wowed, we need to get loud, right? Because I don't know if you know this, but this is the best news you're ever gonna hear in your whole life. No matter what you think, you will never find news better than the fact that someone paid the price for your sins. And all the money in the world can't even pay enough to take away one of the sins that you've done. And Jesus paid for all of your sins. Thousands and thousands of my sins that he paid for. Thousands and thousands of your sins that he paid for. And so I think after we get wowed as praise youth, we need to get loud. And so it's like, we're coming up on color party. Let's get loud in our schools. Let's get loud on our social media. Let's get loud whenever we're going to soccer practice. Let's get loud when we're going to our track meets. Let's get loud when we're going to our conventions. Because as people, we are never ashamed of good news. Like you make the cheerleading team, definitely going on Instagram. I want everyone to know that. You make the track team, soccer team, baseball team, cheer team, any team, any sport, if you make it on that team, you're telling everyone you know, right? You get a victory royale in Fortnite. Some of you haven't still, oh, but you get a victory royale in Fortnite or Call of Duty, you're telling everyone. Like, I got my first one, like, a few weeks ago. I started playing late. I just got my first one a few weeks ago. I literally took a picture of it. I was like, yes, I am awesome. And I sent it to my friends, and they were like, wow, you should have had that a long time ago. Anyways, or if you know someone that was sick, like super sick, maybe they had COVID or maybe they had some other sickness and they get well. You wanna tell everyone. Like when you have this kind of good news, it's not like, ah, I don't wanna tell anyone, like they probably don't wanna hear this. No, you're like, no, my friend was sick and now he's better. Listen, come here, I wanna tell you the story. This is insane. Let me talk about it. I'm trying to get loud and tell you about this good news. It's like the good news, like if you won the lottery, would you wanna tell everyone? Like if you won like a hundred trillion dollars today, you'd be like, nah, I won't post about that on Instagram. That's not really, it's not really Instagram post worthy. I don't know, maybe next time. But you'd be like, are you kidding me? I can buy the whole world. But I want you to know that God is giving out free winning lottery tickets of salvation. He has paid the price. He's like, listen, it's already paid for. Here's a winning ticket. Can you imagine if someone gave you a winning lottery ticket in real life? Can you imagine that? Try, try not saying wow whenever that happens. I'd be like, wow. Because winning the lottery will change your life. But realizing that someone has paid the, sin, paid the price for your sins, that'll change your life and your eternity. Amen? That's why I want us to get loud as praise youth. And that's why we preach about Jesus every week. We want you to get loud. We want other people to know about Jesus. And that's why it's so awesome in Romans 5, 8. It says, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, while we were still in our shame, while we were still running from God, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He knew all the sins you've done. He knows all your shame and he still dies for us. This is the best news ever. 2 Corinthians 5.21, for our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him, in Jesus, we might become the righteousness of God. 
I don't know how you can read that and not be like, wow. Wow, someone took my place. And that's why it's so powerful when we're talking in this series about Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of it because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. Look, I love this verse. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's a statement, right? I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's going to tell us why. Because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. That's the wow. He's like, wow, this is the power of God. It brings salvation to everyone who believes. Then it says, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. He's basically just saying, look, he's saying wow, and then he's getting loud. This is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. So let's get loud about it. Let's tell everyone. Everyone needs this news. Everyone has shame. Everyone's running from something. But are you running to Jesus? And so as you stand, we're about to go into worship. You can stand to your feet. And I believe tonight, what if we, as we sing these songs, we sing incredible songs at Praise Youth and at Praise Church. And these words in these songs, all they're doing is helping us say, wow, God, you're so good. Wow, God, how is this even real? Like, your love is too good to be true, but it is true because it's you, God. It's like, we're gonna sing these songs. We're gonna say, wow. And then what if tonight, as we're singing these songs, we get loud? What if we sing these songs louder than we've ever sung before? What if we sing so loud that people in your life that have never cared about Jesus hear us singing in this room and they're like, man, I, I need to go to color party next week. What if you get loud on your Instagram this week? What if you get loud, not on Facebook, no one has Facebook. What if you get loud in your school and you're like, man, I gotta tell you about this guy named Jesus. Wow, he's so good. I can't help but get loud about it. Who wants to talk about Jesus? Every class I'm going in, I'm talking about Jesus. I'm trying to get loud and talk about Jesus. So as we go into this worship song, I pray that you'll say wow at these lyrics because they're true. And then I pray that we'll sing these songs louder than we ever have. And I don't know if you think it is, but just raising your hands in worship is not weird. Worship is not awkward, it's awesome. Because we're saying, wow, God. God, you're so good. And then we sing loud. So I wanna encourage you tonight. Jesus knows all of your shame. He knows all the sin that you've committed. And when you think that no one can love you, God did love you. And he loves you right now and he wants to be in a relationship with you. And so let's pray. Then we're about to go into these awesome songs. Jesus, thank you for who you are. God, I pray that in these songs you would open our eyes, you would open our hearts to see who you are. God, would you speak to us in these songs and would we give you the praise that you deserve? God, I pray that we would sing loud in this place today because you're worthy of our praise. God, I pray that you would change our hearts and through us, you could bring people to this church, to this ministry, to hear about you, Jesus. Because we're not here just to have fun and have a good time. We're here to get closer to you. So we love you, Jesus. We can't wait to sing your praises. Let's worship, praise you.